I'm going to show you some tips and tricks for using iMovie's transitions to give your video a professional touch, including a powerful pro-level iMovie feature that will revolutionize how you use transitions and any other type of edit in iMovie for that matter. So why would you want to use a transition other than a straight cut in your video? Well, for me, it comes down to one word, and that's change. You want to indicate a change in time. You want to indicate a change in place or location. You want to indicate a change in the point of view, or you want to change the pace and or mood. All right, with that theory out of the way, let's jump into the nuts and bolts of iMovie transitions. So here we are in iMovie and I have a few example clips on the timeline that I'm going to add transitions to. You'll find iMovie's transitions by going up to the top menu above the browser area here and selecting the last item in the list, transitions. And here are all of iMovie's standard transitions. You can preview each one by just scrubbing over them with your cursor. Now you can add a transition to your clips by simply clicking and dragging the transition you want to use to the timeline and placing it between the two clips you want the transition between. Now you can delete a transition by selecting it, then hitting the delete key on your keyboard. You can add a transition to multiple clips in the timeline by marquee selecting all the clips you want the transition applied to, then going up to the transition browser and double clicking the transition you want to use and that transition is applied between all of the selected clips. Now, another way to add transitions to your clips is to move the playhead to the beginning of a clip, click to lock the playhead in place, make sure it's locked there, then hit Command T on your keyboard, and you'll see a cross dissolve transition is added between the clips at that spot. Now, unfortunately, the cross dissolve transition is the only transition that can be applied using the keyboard shortcut command T. All right, say I want to change a transition on the timeline. Now there are actually a few ways to do that. You can simply click and drag the new transition from the transition browser and drop it on top of the transition you want to replace. Another way to replace a transition on the timeline is to select the transition you want to replace first then go up to the transition browser and double click the new transition. And the selected transition on the timeline is replaced. Likewise, if you want to replace multiple transitions on the timeline with a new transition, marquee select the transitions you want to replace, then go up to the transition browser and double click the new transition. And all the selected transitions in the timeline are replaced with the new transition. You can also select multiple transitions on the timeline by holding down the command key on your keyboard while selecting. But I find the marquee select method faster. All right, so we have a multitude of ways to add and change transitions in the timeline. Let's take a closer look at these transitions. If I hover my cursor over the transition, I get a tooltip that tells me how long the transition is, its duration. Every transition I apply to the timeline here is one second long by default, but you can change that default by going up to iMovie's top menu and selecting iMovie Settings. And down here in the settings, we can change the default duration of all the transitions we add in this field right here. So right now it's set to one second. So any transition I apply will be one second long. I'll change that to 1.5 or one and a half seconds, and I'll hit return. And I'll close iMovie settings. And now when I add a new transition to the timeline, the default duration will be one and a half seconds long, as you can see here. Now I say default duration because you can actually change the duration of transitions on the timeline. When I double click on a transition, I get a settings panel. Now you can see the name of the transition and its duration right here. So right now this duration is one second long. I can change the duration of this particular transition by entering a value in here. So I'm gonna change this to point five seconds or half a second. Then I'll click apply. 
And now that transition is half a second long. It's faster. I'll double click to open the transition settings again. Now you probably noticed this other button down here, apply all. What this button does is apply the properties of this particular transition, both the type of transition and its duration, to all the other transitions on the timeline. Now, I'll be honest with you, I never <laughs> use this button for reasons I don't have time to go into in this video. Let's just say the results aren't always what you expect them to be. And that's because of an issue you will inevitably run into when working with transitions in iMovie. Allow me to demonstrate. I'll open up this transition here between these two clips by double clicking on the transition. And I'm going to change its duration to three seconds and hit apply. And I get this alert message. The clips do not have enough media available to change the length of this transition. Now, you may rarely need to create a three second transition, but this brings up something you should know. What this message means is that there's not enough unused footage at the end of the outgoing clip and the beginning of the incoming clip to generate a three second transition at this spot. There's not enough overlap or handles before and after that edit point for the transition to blend the two clips properly over three seconds. However, there is a way around this problem, and that's by using a very powerful but somewhat hidden feature inside of iMovie, and that's the Precision Editor. To open the Precision Editor, you can right-click on the transition, and from the menu select, show Precision Editor. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, Command, forward slash. You can also get to the Precision Editor by double-clicking on either side of an edit point. So here we are inside the Precision Editor. Now the top track here is the outgoing clip at this edit point. And the bottom track is the incoming clip at this edit point. And this long light gray bar is the transition. Now I can change the duration of the transition by clicking and dragging on either side of the gray bar. I can also adjust the location of the transition by clicking and dragging on the center of it. Now the advantage of working with transitions in the Precision Editor is that you can see how much media or overlap is available for the transition. That's this shaded area on the outgoing and incoming clips. And you can adjust how much overlap you have to work with by clicking and dragging on the outgoing clip and incoming clip. Now to play back your transition in the Precision Editor, make sure that you place your cursor on this dark strip between the two clips before you preview with the spacebar. Now I have an in-depth tutorial on how to use the Precision Editor. I'll link to it in the card above. I'll also leave a link in the description. To close the Precision Editor, you can click the Close button over here or hit the Escape key on your keyboard. iMovie's collection of transitions is more than adequate, in my opinion, for most editing jobs. But if you're looking for something a little more exciting, iMovie actually has a hidden collection of slick animated transitions. If you want to know how to access those fancier transitions, along with some other slick animated graphics, have a look at this video. And of course, if you find this video useful, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want more iMovie tips and tricks for making pro level videos, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.